Hey guys, I want to talk about a topic today that usually people think about it in terms of contest prep, but I think it's a good overall general topic, and that's sodium. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people try to limit salt, and a lot of that's based off of the uh, dietetic guidelines, which suggest consuming less than 2,400 milligrams of sodium per day, and uh, really looking at salt in a negative light. Uh, in terms of blood pressure, heart disease, those sorts of things. Um, unfortunately, this is one of those topics that people... Correlation does not equal causation. <laughs> so, first off, your, your levels of blood sodium are very important. Your, your sodium... Um, sodium is an absolutely critical <clears throat> nutrient for every single cell in your body. Um, the sodium potassium pump drives an enormous amount of of chemical reactions and further um, is responsible for creating action potentials in your nervous system the the influx of sodium so um, if you were able to create big rises and falls in your in your blood sodium uh, you would die. <laughs> so your blood sodium is very, very tightly controlled. Um, now, unfortunately, when you look at the data, you see that uh, high sodium intakes are associated with heart disease. Hence some of the recommendations that are out there. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that high sodium intake is also associated with just a poor diet in general in terms of um, you know, higher, higher calorie intake, um, you know, uh, more refined foods, those sorts of things. And so it's just associated with an overall poor quality diet. And that's what we call confounding variables. Does sodium actually cause high blood pressure, which is by many accounts what people believe? Well, you have to understand. Sodium in the, the blood range of sodium is very tightly controlled. And if you increase your sodium consumption, your kidneys will increase sodium excretion. By the same token, if you decrease sodium consumption, your kidneys will decrease uh, sodium excretion. Okay, so your kidneys will control that. <clears throat> and your today's sodium intake is tomorrow's output, is one of the things I like to say. So if you ate less sodium today, you would just excrete less following that. And if you ate more, you would excrete more. So if, if any of you have ever um, eaten like a really high sodium, like if you've changed your salt intake, sodium intake, and you've sustained that, initially like if you increase sodium, you got to bump up in weight and then it went back down and leveled out. Same token, if you decrease sodium, you got to drop in weight and then it came back up and leveled out, okay? So there was actually a study done back in the early 90s where they took men and they basically completely salt or sodium depleted them. And what they showed was that their blood levels of sodium did not change at all over the course of a week. Um, and in fact, all that happened was their levels of aldosterone tripled. Aldosterone is a hormone that makes you retain water and sodium. And, uh, and their sodium excretion went down to almost nothing. So your body is going to conserve that sodium regardless. Same token, if you overeat it, if you overconsume it, your body is just going to get really good at excreting it. Um, I'll be honest, I've had people who have had been eating over 10,000 milligrams a day of sodium, and you go look at their blood work, and their cholesterol is fine, their, their uh, blood pressure is fine, all that sort of thing, because that's what their body is, is normalized to. That's what their body is adjusted to. Now... There is about 5 to 10% of the population that are what we call salt sensitive. That is, their kidneys do not eliminate sodium uh, effectively. For those individuals, they do need to control their sodium intake. They need to keep below 2,000 milligrams a day. Okay, But for 90 to 95% of people out there, that is not a concern. Um, the only concern I'd have is if you have a high sodium intake, make sure you have a high level of water intake. But usually those go hand in hand because if you eat more sodium, you'll tend to be thirstier. That's your body self-regulating. Okay, So 
Uh, and even sodium, a lot of people have a negative connotation with regards to contest prep, but I recommend going and, and watching my video on, uh, uh, it's a video log uh, talking about, uh, I think it's number 17, don't fuck up your peak week. And um, I talk about like why sodium is actually a good thing. And if you, I mean, think about it, if you've ever gone out and you've had uh, a really salty meal while you're in contest prep, you'll get very hard and vascular a couple hours later. Um, now the next day you may seem a little bit watery, the next day you may be a little bit spooled over, but I like to use that, um, that like a nice salty meal about two hours before stage to bring out that vascularity and that hardness. Whereas um, most people are depleting sodium, which is completely wrong. So uh, I think sodium is also like if you train hard, you're just going to excrete more sodium. You're going to need more of those electrolytes. Sodium is a, a big time electrolyte. So I think it's important to keep it in balance with the other electrolytes. Um, I don't recommend going out and, and, and going crazy with sodium just because you can. However, if you have a high sodium intake, there doesn't seem to be any direct evidence that suggests that it's unhealthy as long as you excrete sodium uh, in a normal fashion. So unless you have some kind of kidney uh, function issue or you are salt sensitive uh, and you can enjoy your salt and uh, it shouldn't have really uh, negative repercussions. Now again I would recommend getting checked out make sure you aren't salt sensitive make sure you have normal kidney function but if that's the case shake it like a salt shaker. Alright guys I'll catch you next time.